Hey guys, thank you for tuning in to another episode of InRange. This is another one of our continuing uh, armor penetration test videos. And Ian, you've acquired us two rounds of something called Slap. Oh God. Have you seen my what, new... What is that? It is a cyberpunk Japanese Arasaka hunting bayonet equipped electro optically mounted thingamajig. I think that's a war crime. It is a war crime, but you know what it is? It's chambered in 308. Oh, okay. Because someone turned this into a hunting gun. You know, that was the thing back in the day. We yeah. brought these things back from the war and they're like, wow, these things are everywhere. They're like cordwood. It's got a cheap hunting rifle. This thing was like ridiculously cheap at the gun show with this incredible artistic stock. So what you're saying is you did, you are not personally responsible for this act of defilement. Oh man, I am not culpable for anything <laughs> that's ever happened to this gun. That said, it's kind of an interesting conversion. You know, it is a, obviously a viable hunting rifle. Sure. But one of the reasons we brought this out today, first of all, to get chronograph readings and also to fire a round that's 308, is because you said that these slap rounds, which we're gonna get into in a minute, probably don't really play well with muzzle devices. Right, so what we are testing today is XM948. Okay. Slap, Sabode Light Armor Penetrating. Slap. Exactly. Okay. Uh, so the military did actually adopt this stuff in 50. Mm -hmm. um, the idea was they had the M61, which was 7.62 NATO armor piercing. Mm -hmm. It was a regular bullet with a hardened core, and it wasn't good enough. They were looking for a way to do better. And penetration comes primarily from velocity. You okay. need a hard, you need a hard, uh, you know, perforating projectile. Right. You don't, you know, bubble gun isn't going to go through steel. Right. But once you've got a good penetrator, it's then a matter of velocity. The more velocity you can put behind a good penetrator, the more penetration you're going to get. Right. Um, yeah. And if you try to make a, in order to make it. Go faster, you have to make it lighter. Mm -hmm. But if you make a lightweight 308 caliber bullet, it's going to be short. It's going to have terrible uh, aerodynamic or terrible ballistics. Mm -hmm. It's not going to work well. So the solution that they came up with, potentially, was let's take a 20 caliber bullet. Okay. That is not even, well, it's a bullet, but it doesn't have a jacket. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's a hardened tungsten alloy. Uh, and we'll put it in a plastic sabo to bring it up so it'll engage rifling. And we'll fire that. And this is a 52 and a half grain projectile traveling at somewhere between 4,000 and 4,300 feet per second. We'll find out because we've got our magneto speed. Yes, we will. Yes. Now, that sounds really great, mm -hmm. and I'm really curious to see what these will actually do on our steel plates, but this never got adopted because there were a couple of problems with it. Okay. Problem number one uh, is that it didn't play well with muzzle brakes or any muzzle device, flash hiders, which you, by the way, have on things like the M60. Uh, because this Sabo splits into pieces and fragments off as soon as it leaves the bore. Makes sense. And that didn't, you don't want shrapnel inside your muzzle device, uh, which is why we're using a gun without a muzzle device. The second problem was they would occasionally have problems with the Sabo disintegrating when you, you know, accelerate it up to 4,000 feet per second. Down the tube. Right. Mm. And then you have a 20 caliber bullet ricocheting its way down a 30 caliber bore, potentially damaging the bore. Well, with a, with a penetrator that is much harder in exactly. surface hardness than the barrel. Right. When someone does something stupid like that, like accidentally firing a 9, a, a nine millimeter and a forty caliber pistol, it's a jacketed, lead, copper jacketed lead bullet. It's mm -hmm. going to bounce down and you're not going to hit anything, but it's not going to damage the gun. This potentially could damage. It's going to gouge a whole bunch of stuff on the way out. Kind of like 855A1. Yeah, sure. Um, so that's the reason that we're using a craptastic gun with a bare muzzle. Mm -hmm. So if anything happens to this, Eh. Sorry. Oh, well. It, it's pretty much dead already. Now, this stuff isn't super high pressure. No, normal pressure. Okay. Uh, it gets its high velocity by having a very light projectile. Makes sense. So, um, our two cartridges here are slightly different. They have slightly different versions of the Sabo. Should be functionally identical. Um, I believe the change in, diff in profile mm -hmm. was for feeding. Oh, okay. Um, yep. And one of these is a 1985, one is a 1990. I believe pre-production was like 1984. Sure. And they made the cartridges for about five years. Ultimately, they discarded this idea because of the problems that I've just described and went with M993 instead. Okay, fair enough. So we've got two armor plates. Yep. Well, normally we did one armor plate. Yeah, this will go just bluey right through one armor plate. We have plate. found all AP thingies to do that. Yep. But we have not found any AP thingy to go through two stacked plates. Not successfully. So this, what in theory, this is supposed to be able to do. Well, we don't know. All right, let's go. So uh, how thick are our plates? Uh-oh. Our plates are three-eighths of an inch thick each. Thank you. They are uh, AR-450. Yes. Uh, hardened steel armor that we got from uh, Mitch at MOA Targets. Correct. So if you're looking for targets, check him out. Um, we'll see if we can punch holes in his targets. Let's do it. So in order to both make sure that we have the chronograph calibrated before we fire our, uh, <laughs> our 
two cartridges that we have available for this video, because those are, by the way, like $40 or $50 cartridges each. So again, thanks to Jeff for providing those. We've We're going to start 308. basic commercial 308. This will allow us to confirm zero on the rifle, to confirm that the chronograph is working, and also just to give you a, uh, a look at what a 308 round standard lead jacketed ball is going to do to our steel plate. So fire when ready, Carl. All right, so here's our standard ball hit. Absolutely nothing but splash. There's not even a there's not even a dimple that I can feel with my finger. It is nothing. Nothing but a splash. Squish. So a squish. Let's go back and hit it with slap. All right. All right, so here we've got the uh, 1985 slap round. Right under the first hit. Ooh, I jumped a little bit at that one, sorry. Not very much, it's no extra recoil, as you said. And we did not get velocity on that. Huh. Maybe the Sabo and that tiny projectile won't read. You know, I don't know that it's particularly magnetic. Let's go see what we got. This is a magneto speed chronometer. It is. chronograph. Uh, oh, ho, no penetration. We've got a nice crater on the front. So I would say that projectile obliterated the first plate, but did almost nothing to the second. And yeah, let's take it off. This looks like it didn't do anything special compared to any other AP we've tested, to be honest. No, it, well, it looks like it did a really thorough job on that first plate, but almost nothing on the second. Well, that's what we're gonna find out in a minute. What we've seen on other rounds is like a, a smaller hole that kind of starts to penetrate into the second plate. Right. I think that was the 30 odd six black tip that had the most. Oof. Yeah. But it did not do anything magical in terms of getting through both. That's for sure. No. I'm a little surprised. I kind of thought it would. Maybe that's why they didn't continue it. That would certainly be, you know, if you had that on top of, you can't necessarily use it in all the guns and occasionally it doesn't work. And occasionally it destroys your barrel. All right. Here we go, ready? Yep. Oh my gosh. Did not even It didn't even make it through. Yep. That did worse than 30 odd six. Yeah. Now, here's a question. Flip that up, would you? Of course. What about the possibility that the bullet went sideways? Look at it. Yeah. That's a very acorn shaped hole. What if we had a plastic Sabo that is now, by the way, uh, 30 years old, mm -hmm. you know, fragment in the bore, and that projectile tumbled. That is, it is certainly possible that we, that does not look like a clean hit. No, it doesn't. Do we go back with two plates? Should we shoot that final round with one plate? I think we should do the same thing with our second round. Let's see if we get the same result. All right, let's do it. All right, so we're gonna give it one more round. This is the 1990 slap round. Five years newer than the 85. If your theory of key holding is correct, hopefully this one will hit properly. Whenever you are. Oh, I think it might've gone through. I saw rocks wobbling. I see a nice clean hole from here. Did we get a... Uh... No reading. All right. All right, let's go take a look. I think you're right. I think that tumbled. That tumbled. But, nope. So it did tumble. However, look at the difference in the entrance. This is clean. That's not clean. Certainly cleaner. All right, so I think we're seeing something there. Well, let's see what we got. All right. All right. I'm going to truth. Do it. Yep. Nope. It's got a dent. Oh, yeah, that is actually a very, that's a, a tangible dent there. This was getting ready to, but not quite. Yeah. Both of these rounds did not perform as well as the 30 out six. So this one has just a little bit of, of dent you can feel. That one's actually kind of starting to flake up. Yeah, you can see that it's actually, there's, there's relief to that. Yeah, that would have gone through if it had been one plate. But absolutely nothing to the secondary plate. Maybe a little mark. Now, on this guy, 
this hole is also not perfectly round. I think you're right. This was a this was this was keyholing. This might have been starting. Look how that's yeah. Look right here. Keyholing, but happened to hit closer to point on. Yeah. Which indicates maybe this thing had better capabilities when it was new, but I think that's an interesting conversation to be had. Right, that really kind of answers the effectiveness question if you can't get it to run, I would say, interesting, but a bit disappointing. Yeah, and I think this is an instance. You know, we heard in our, God, I think the very first in-range video we ever did was the first time we tested, you know, the B Patrol, the yeah. observation rounds. And people make a lot of comments on there about the degradation of the round. Right. Does it actually do what it did 75 years ago? I personally think that there was no degradation that was perceivable in that test. No, the, D, the B Patron survives fine. This... Because of that plastic, I think we've got rounds that are keyholing. Well, you're dealing with old timey polymers. I yeah. mean, when we're talking 80s and 90s, polymer just isn't what it was then that it is now. Right. Plus, um, it did look yellowed. I don't know yep. if that was originally supposed to be yellowed or not. I don't know. We'd have to try and reference that. But I, I agree with your conclusion. This first strike was not a clean strike. This was literally the penetrator doing keyholing. Yeah. Which gave it absolutely far less penetration capabilities. Yeah. And I think this one was starting. Yep. I agree. Um, it, it's bulging the back pretty good, but the fact that this does not perform as well as even what we saw with just 308 black tip, 762 by 51 black tip AP, I think we're seeing a degradation issue. Yeah, if this were normal uh, performance, they wouldn't have spent five years experimenting with it in the first place. No, but you know what this does say? A couple things, right? One, there are issues with muzzle devices. Yep. Bam. There was an issue with occasionally the, uh, the Sabo itself disintegrating and causing barrel damage as the penetrator passed down the barrel. Mm -hmm. Second problem. Yep. Now we know it's a storage issue as well. That's true. Yeah. So if they didn't know that, maybe then, but now we're way into the future on this thing. We have these like, you know, surplus rounds. If that is a storage issue, there was a third and tertiary issue with this concept. Yeah. Which means this was not a good idea. Well, what it means is you just have to scale it up to 50. Well, yeah, they're continuing. Well, because at 50, you don't have muzzle devices. Mm -hmm. Uh, you've got much bigger, you've got a lot more mass in the Sabo. Right, so the actual polymer is more likely to hold together because, you know, obviously yep. as you get smaller. And in fact, they did adopt this in 50. Mm -hmm. So they're also probably shooting it more regularly and is therefore not sitting around in warehouses aging. Yeah. Right? So if, if it's being used, then that degradation issue is less relevant. Yeah. And this is stuff that hasn't been used because it's been sitting around since 1985 and 1990. Yeah. So we know the concept had merit in a large enough cartridge. Right. And they're also using Ralphus, so the B-Patron still exists too in that regard too. So 50 seems to be the magic number for some of this cool, for cool whiz-bang ammunition. Yeah, well, it's, that's where you got enough space to actually have a payload. I do want to say one thing. That Magneto Speed Chronograph is my favorite chronograph on the planet. Did not read these, but I'm not surprised. I'm a little disappointed. I Actually, I thought it would. Well, I didn't think it would. I mean, it's, a, it's a tiny little metallic unobtainium projectile surrounded by polymer thingamajigs. We are asking a lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So uh, the references I have, uh, the official references say 4,000. I found one reference to a guy who said he chronoed one decade, like in 1992 or something mm -hmm. um, and got 4,300, which seems high. Um, the official Army documents I found said 4,000. They were mild to shoot. There was okay. absolutely no perceivable anything there. Yeah, I'm not surprised. Light bullet high velocity has less recoil to it. Yeah, totally. Yeah. So anyways, I found this, uh, this is an interesting test. It doesn't give us anything conclusive besides our, my conclusion, I think, or I should share the conclusion. Degregation caused us to have an ineffective amount of penetration that might have been capable 20 years ago. Yeah. Oh, well, thanks for bringing out those rounds. Yeah. And thank you to someone who gave it to us. Thanks to Jeff for providing us with these cartridges. Thank you, Jeff, so much. I mean, that kind of support matters just as much as any other support. So, guys, if you like this kind of stuff, consider supporting InRange on Patreon. Obviously, those two slap rounds were donated to us, but everything else was not, including these plates, although we did get them at a good price yep. from Mitch at MOA Targets. Thank you to Mitch for that. Um, again, if you like that, please consider it. If you already are, we appreciate it. If you can't, just subscribe to one of the multiple distribution points. We're all over the place. You can find us on InRange.tv. Thanks for watching and share with your friends.